And this is another example of a parallel injection. Um, and we've got a little focusing going on. And here you can see the fronts moving. And you can see the separation of the different components uh, inside, the, uh, inside the channels. And you, can, you saw the, the onset of them getting divided up into those channels. This is an example of a DNA uh, digest, PhiX174. Uh, and all the components made by a, a restriction enzyme digest getting separated through a gel. So, oh, five minutes? Okay, thanks. Um, I'll do one more video. I'm probably going to wind up cutting out a bunch of slides, but that's okay. This is kind of the same thing, and here you can see it's the same sample getting digested and moving along those channels, probably just later on than here. And you can see these uh, peaks starting to, to form, and what's happening actually is the... Um, the dye is actually finding the DNA and making it start to glow. So these peaks are just kind of uh, appearing as the intercalator reaches the DNA. So it's neat to be able to watch this stuff in real time. Um, here we go. And here are some other examples that actually come from uh, our group. This is an example of beads and red blood cells that are getting manipulated in just uh, in a cross channel and, and moved uh, from left to right. Um, this video is a bit of a crude example of, of the movement of those beads and cells. And the other side, I'll play you a video. This is the cell right here, and you'll see uh, it move up and down and to the left and right. So it just shows that, that uh, we have the ability to control both objects uh, on our chips and reagents to bring to them so that we can accomplish some, some nice things. Okay, so I'll go back to the screen so I can see it. So, uh, let's look at a few commercial examples. I'll kind of zip through these a little bit. Um, there are a number of companies that are working in the area of, uh, areas of, area of microfluidics. Some are doing mostly OEM manufacturer, Micronet, Microline here in town, uh, microfluidic chip shop in Germany, Micronet's in Holland. So they have a few uh, off-the-shelf products, but mostly they focus on what the customer wants. There are some other companies, Fluidime, Caliper, um, Biorad, and Agilent, who have a more substantial off-the-shelf offering. It's really just a different business model. Um, and they, they're, uh, in many of these cases, they focus on fairly mainstream DNA, RNA, protein uh, kinds of analyses that they can actually have uh, pretty good sales for those kinds of products in, in uh, standard genetics labs and whatnot. Let's look at our work in our group. Um, our team is made up of uh, a, uh, well, we're funded by the AHFMR, $5 million over five years. We're about a year and a half in. We're led by Linda Polarski. We have a number of uh, researchers, mostly at the University of Alberta, Chris Backhouse, Stephanie yeah. Yano, Jason Acker, also affiliated with uh, Prov Labs, Canadian Blood Services. Uh, we also have a uh, society and ethics component to our, to our team. And our objectives are to look at, to look at these uh, uh, cancer, blood and disease diagnostics and develop them uh, with microfluidics technology and with the, that uh, group I mentioned, assess their social impact and acceptance uh, of the technology. Um, we want to, we're definitely focused on making a commercial product and so with that in mind we're, we're lo always looking to foster ties and maybe today we're looking to foster ties with potential commercial partners. Um, so I will skip over this so we can get, these are some of the specific uh, applications that we're looking at doing in cancer diagnostics, disease diagnostics and uh, blood typing. Um, we have common technology, uh, more or less, for the, whole, uh, for the whole team, for the different uh, applications. So let's look at a few images, if I can kind of skip through to get to those. We have one kind of chip, more or less. This is basically taken straight from Rich Matthey's uh, uh, work a few years ago. And the chip has, uh, actually the next slide shows the chip in detail. This is one example of an instrument that started with a, uh, a startup company, uh, iLock. This is the Verilock, and this is uh, the instrument uh, developed in Chris Backhouse's lab. Both of these are used to run this chip, run DNA samples with PCR in the middle. Let's have a look at that chip. So here's that chip blown up a little bit, and here's the ugly detailed version, and you can still see everything here. So we put a sample in here if it's just a raw DNA sample. We use these uh, valves to pump the sample into the PCR chamber. The chamber is then heated. You can see a metal ring around here that heats the uh, PCR chamber so it cycles up and down and performs the DNA amplification. 
Um, once the DNA has been amplified, we pump it out with more pumps here into this well. This PCR output well is also the capillary electrophoresis input well. So we inject that sample through this little S-shaped channel to the intersection and then shoot off, just as you saw in those video injections, our sample of uh, DNA through the lung separation channel and we'll have uh, laser-induced fluorescence to pick that up, pick up whatever it is that we've generated in our, in our cell. So that's kind of the heart of the disease diagnostic and the technology we're developing. Here are some examples of some data that uh, get generated, in this case uh, with the TTK. So these are just plots of the, the thermal cycling. Remember our chip uh, amplifies the sample up by PCR here. So this is a trace as we monitor the temperature going up and down that we're hitting the right temperatures we need to do that amplification. And here, once we've injected that sample down the, uh, this long channel, we detect it with uh, the laser at one point, and, and this is the trace generated, the fluorescence trace generated, as we see our primer and our product come through. Another version of that theme using the same chip but a different instrument is to inject the sample, uh, the PCR sample, amplify it up here, and then do what's called a melt point analysis. So we've amplified all our DNA, and now we look to see at what point the different components melt and their fluorescence drops off as they melt. And so here's a melting curve showing the, uh, the different constituents melting at different temperatures. In this case, we're looking at the uh, four different species of malaria. And so that in itself is a det uh, detection method for us. So conclusions. Um, microfluidics is a research field that is in its adolescence. It's been around for enough time right now and it hasn't seen its killer app, but there's still uh, a lot of people and a lot of companies that are providing considerable effort to making this technology succeed. Um, our team is one of them. We're making good strides and if you would like to talk more about the kind of work that we do with me, I'd be happy to uh, entertain any discussions. And I'll just finish by uh, acknowledging uh, the team that funds us, uh, the group that funds us, uh, AHFMR, um, the members of my team, you for your attention, and ACAMP for uh, having me here to uh, speak to you. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>